bring in Olivia Daig, who uh, was with the National Weather Service team earlier today. They did a sor survey, as is very typical, the day after a tornado, and uh, they had quite a bit to see here, Olivia. And Todd, as I was following them, they followed this stretch right off of Morgan County Highway. They were taking pictures and identifying damage to send back to the National Weather Service in Morristown. They were determining how fast the wind had to be, how what the speeds of those winds had to be to do this amount of damage. And now we know, of course, EF1 tornado. EF1 tornado, maximum winds 105 miles per hour. And the top end of an EF1 scale is 110, so it was close to being an EF2. Just devastation. Again, on the ground for five minutes, right through the heart of downtown. Many folks being impacted, but amazingly, thank God, no injuries, no fatalities. And that's one of the blessings of this event. We can rebuild, but thankfully, no injuries reported here. Right, and we're going to take a closer look into how the National Weather Service was able to make that decision when I followed them around today. A team from the National Weather Service has boots on the ground Wednesday in Morgan County. That's our left side oh, of the track. It's a little bit further behind these buildings. Yeah. And it Meteorologist Sam Roberts, Andrew Moulton, and Jeremy Buckles spent the day looking at down roofs, trees, and broken power lines. They're documenting damage and taking pictures to send to the Weather Center in Morristown, where another group of scientists will study them. So a lot of things that we're looking at are um, what we call damage indicators. So we have software that basically assigns wind speed ratings based on the damage that we have seen. The team determines what was damaged, whether it was a home, a business, or something else. They also look at the structure. Was it wood, metal, brick? Then the severity of the damage. You know, is it a full structure collapse? Is it partial structure collapse? Is it a, a roof that has been lifted off? Is it partial walls uh, that have been that have fallen over? The next step is to figure out the path of the tornado, where it started, stopped, and how wide it was. They also look at where it touched down. The tornado came through downtown Sunbright, a town of around 500 people. It hit several buildings rather than a rural area. If it had, they would look at tree damage. But when you do have it move through a more populated area, you can more fine tune some of those wind speed ratings because you have several structures to assess. Unfortunately, more damage means meteorologists can better identify the specifics of the storm.